Just for a short introduction, I'm Shintaro. I'm a senior researcher at the, it's a long name, Institute of Experimental Design and Media Cultures at the Academy of Art and Design within the University of Applied Science and uh, Arts, Northwest, Northwestern Switzerland, which is based in Basel, a um, small town in Switzerland. And my background is uh, media history, but also musicology and uh, philosophy. But I was uh, very much interested for a long time in computer music, so also very much in resonance with other um, computer music practices. So um, one target of my short input within these 10 minutes is to draw your attention to algorithmics, which is a body of research I worked on mostly 10 to five years ago, basically featuring the listening culture of the early mainframe uh, computing era between 1945 and 1965. And during these 20 years, machine operators and scientists were listening to their computing machinery or to, or to be more precise to algorithms at work and their rhythms. So I called them algorithms written wrongly with uh, R, H, Y, T, H, and not uh, R, I, T, H. Um, I will do that as this is probably what you expect, but also I would like to combine this with some unfinished approaches and alternative views. So as you know, machine listening, uh, as we already heard many times today, uh, is usually understood in relation to machine vision, which is a form of machine analysis based on statisticals or other methods, uh, subsumed more and more under the term artificial intelligence or deep learning or whatever. whatever. And these analytical algorithm-based tools reveal structural differences in the data under study. And in case it is visual data, such, such as picture or maps, you, you call this uh, machine vision. And if it's audio data, then we speak of machine listening. So when we try to grammatically differentiate and play with the two terms, machine and listening, we will get combinations such as a machine is listening or listening to a machine which provokes also the question, who is actually listening, right? So is it a machine or living organism, such as a human? Are there several agents listening to each other, or is it just one machine? And how are these entities, <coughs> such as users, operators, tools, algorithms, protocols, and so on, related to each other? And what are the interfaces and the mediating elements and modules? So. Here we have um, squares and circles, while squares represent machines and circles humans. And the picture you see is part of a cover of a 1977 grant proposal with uh, the title Graphical Conversation Theory, written by the MIT Architecture Machine Group, the kernel group which later became the MIT Media Lab, um, submitted to the National Science Foundation of the country. So according to Paul Pangaro, a former PhD student of the British cybernetic designer and architect Gordon Pask, who coined the concept of conversation theory. So according to Pang Pangaro, who wrote about the cover in, in a 2012 blog post about Siri and other AI bots, the picture represents people interacting with machines, that's the left side, then uh, talking to each other through machines, that's there in the middle, and then talking only to machines. So for this workshop, we of course could try to further differentiate a little bit and interpret the graphical combination on the left as machine, a human listening to a machine or a machine listening to a human. Then in the middle, machines intercepting a human to human conversation. And finally on the right, several machines, thus kind of an ecology of machines, both listening to and communicating with human being uh, while at the same time maybe having also a conversation for themselves. So and whether there is a progress between the middle and the right constellation, it's another question. But by going through this possible semantic and conceptual combinations, we might enrich a little bit the meaning of machine listening in um, some sort of productive or one could also say diffractive uh, way. So that say, I try to now reiterate the first constellation, which is a human listening to machines or machines listening to humans. So, and I would like to focus on the first combination, which brings me again to uh, the algorithmics. 
So here you see a <coughs> mainframe machine from 1956 called uh, Pegasus uh, from Ferranti, which in, in Manchester. It's not so big machine anymore. It's a kind of a cupboard, huge cupboard. And the question is also from our media theoretical side, where are the interfaces? So we have here an oscilloscope. We have a type machine writing out the data. Then we have also uh, a speaker. And uh, as I worked out in several papers in my dissertation in German, um, several mainframe computers between 1940 and 1956, uh, 65, sorry, had built in uh, loudspeaker amplifier systems uh, to sonify or audify um, computational processes. So, and it sounded like this, just to make it short, this is a different computer from Philips, but they had a record. So. This is one sort of calculation. There are like five or six of those recordings. And then also gladly for me as a, a historian or former historian, there was like an article very precisely describing the process of the um, generation of that sound you can hear. And here is the algorithm. It's an algorithm uh, to calculate uh, prime numbers, whether a big number is a prime number or not. And actually, yeah, so this is producing the sound. And then also you could uh, think about what goes into the algorithms. Maybe the algorithms is also listening to, not listening, but listening in a metaphorical way to numbers and they get kind of processed. So this sounds like that. Oops. Hmm. can follow here the, it's like a score, and this is the prime number. Now it's finding out the prime number because it takes a long time. Okay, so this is kind of historical work. I did, and also I tried to do similar things, uh, question if similar things are now that's possible, and indeed it's possible. So I did this with, uh, with uh, magnetic coils, and you can listen to the electromagnetic emission. You can do that with mobile phones also. Maybe the video is broken. Uh, yeah, anyway, so you can imagine. Also, you can do it hardware-based, uh, software-based. I try to sonify uh, just very simple algorithms, so, um, sorting algorithms. Um, this is bubble sort, it's a very stupid one. That the point is now you can compare it with merge sort, for example, and then you will see that it really behaves different. So. Okay. So as you know, yeah, you can read this in more detail in some of these publications, and um, maybe you have many open questions. But <clears throat> I would like to work out a bit one remaining open question a bit, which is uh, why did 
this uh, listening practice of this in the in the 50s and and 60s uh, suddenly disappear. So which brings me to the operator and again to this picture. So I, the argument I developed in some of the briefly, briefly shown uh, publications is that listening practices disappeared due to the emergence of operating systems in the 1960s. So crucial machine um, operator knowledge got then kind of embodied into the operating system. And this is some kind of a reversal between listening to a machine and the machine being able to listen to, to itself. And also, um, yeah, the possibility of listening to machine led then also to machines listening, you could say. So this historical, if you look at such processes of re reversals, you have similar processes in telegraphy in the 1920s, automated uh, telegraph machines, telephony in the 1940s with switching machinery, the telephone operator who was, yeah, you need to talk to and uh, the call the number, got this um, replaced with switching machinery and then also with computation. And maybe you could look at more advanced replacements such as uh, sonar operators or eavesdroppers uh, and maybe also if you would further kind of see a <coughs> linear development of that, if you want. Uh, you can also see like other diff um, replacements like, you know, like we talked uh, just before, like ornithologists, maybe they, they got replaced or uh, musicologists or historians. But also if you look at it a little bit from a different angle, there are also many fields where epistemic listening skills are still used, such as uh, medical auscultation, uh, using the stethoscope, uh, which is a very fast and simple um, method for medical di diagnostics. Also, like um, in, in Japan, people use um, their ear uh, for looking at the water and the canalization or listening to the canalization. Also, you can just uh, pick, um, beat on a cheese and check if it's ripe or not. Right, so this is a this is a question of um, how much effort and um, energy you put into this transformation process. Okay, so I think that's my point. Yeah.